Hey guys, welcome to today's video. We're going to be talking about JO PLA Plus. See you guys inside. Hello and welcome to today's video. Today's video we are going to talk about JO PLA Plus. Now, PLA Plus and PLA Silk. We're going to basically look at five things with this. So, JO actually sent me filament to give it a shot. So um, this is sponsored by them. These are the two types. They sent me white PLA plus and they sent me silver silk PLA. So I'm gonna discuss both those and actually you can see I've got two models that I printed with the white um, PLA plus. Um, basically I'm gonna cover five topics here. So I'm gonna cover color because I do wanna talk about that a little bit. Um, cost, where to find it, and ease of use and paint and detail. So Basically, what I want to cover with these is how does this cost compare to other PLAs that I use similar, like Inland and Duramac and different things like that, how they rate in comparable cost. Locations where you can find it um, is pretty straightforward. Um, honestly, the easiest place to find this stuff is Amazon, so I'm going to direct you to the Amazon site for that one. There will be a link down in the description for the PLA um, and different types. They've got PETG, they got ABS, they got all kinds of stuff. But at the end of this, it's gonna be my full overall opinion, is this PLA one you wanna get for your shop? Or just your individual printer. Um, I'm running, a, I'm basically running a print shop now with as many printers as I've got. So I wanna cover those all in detail. So I'm gonna break this up a little bit. And honestly, you're gonna see this guy go from printed to paint. So let's, uh, let's head off with that and if you're liking the content on the channel and you're interested in seeing me do more videos on different PLA types and different brands and different things like that, make sure you leave me a comment down below that you would like to see that or if there's a brand that you think I should try. Let me down, know down below because I don't try a lot of these. I think I've tried Isan and a couple other brands. Um, I found one that I like that works, that works really well, so I'm completely open to trying new things, especially if it's something that you want to see on the channel. So we definitely want to get that out there. Um, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Um, join the crew. This channel is growing at a great rate. Um, I want to make sure I'm getting good content out there. So definitely your guys' feedback and share this with anybody that you know that does 3D printing. So let's get to that first bullet point of cost. So cost. Huh. This can be a painful, painful thing, especially when you're hunting for material. I know people that they want dirt, dirt cheap. People want Oh, it must be expensive, it must be really, really good, and then there's the middle of the line. But what does it make a good PLA? Well, in all honesty, these guys, their PLA is out there for $18.99 a spool. Which, my Inland PLA that you see me use all the time on the channel, $18.99 a spool. Same size, same cost point. So that is an actual really competitive price for a spool of PLA. Now, some of the stuff that I buy, because I'll use spoolless and put it on a spool, so I knock a few bucks off with the inland but that's just me i like doing it i've had great luck with spoolless but these guys for their comparative price especially on the pla plus uh 18.99 is really good price point so um you'll probably find the price points vary between different plas um i need to look and see what the silk is but all in all their price comparison for their quality spot on um because I'm actually going to hop over to ease of use here real quick with this one too. So one and two are going to kind of be together. Um, I didn't have to change a single setting. I popped this in and just started printing. And I was very impressed with that because I've had other PLAs. I've had to raise temperatures to get it to flow. I've had to just clog up my printers and different things like that. And they're more expensive PLAs. And this guy went right in the printer, right in, and worked really, really well. So I was really impressed with that, that it the temperature variations are right on the mark with what I'm used to using. I didn't have to really make any changes to my printer to get this to go. So for PLA, um, it's one of those things, I've had PLA just be a bummer, but this stuff just flowed and it worked great. So I'm actually gonna get a little closer here because ease of use worked great. Um, I was very impressed with it. And as you can see here, I got a Battlestar Pegasus. I printed one in there. And you can see, yes, it's white. So we're hopping into number three here with the color. It's white, but when I compare it to Inland White, 
there is definitely a difference between the two. So Inland PLA Plus, I definitely have a pearly white. Um, this is their straight white. Um, so this one I've got kind of an off-white, almost wanting to have like a clear glaze to it. So color-wise, um, Inland definitely kind of wins, but compared to most other white PLAs, this one's spot on. So it's kind of one of those things. It definitely prints great. The detail on it came out as I expected. It came out really well. Um, one of the things I'm going to talk about too is I'm actually going to go primer this. And I've got another one that I've primered in inlet that's made from inland. And I want to look and see how the paint lays on it. Because one of the things that's important about finishing a model is how well is your paint going to adhere to it. I've had some plastics, none of my stuff worked great. <laughs> worked very well. I've had other plastics where it went right on. Perfectly smooth, looked gorgeous. So, and all honesty guys, I haven't even filled this. This is just glued together. And it's the detail has come out really well. It printed really well. So I'm actually debating whether I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna invest in more JL. Um, the price point's there and the colors, you know, it's one of those things. It's a good filament. And that's hard to find as we do printing. And I'm sure there's people screaming, oh, this brand's great, this brand's great. I only have a limited amount of experience with different PLA types. I find what works and I run with it at a good cost point. So I've worked with Duramec, which is for their PLA Plus, you're talking $30 a roll, and I had nothing but problem with it. Um, I had to do a bunch of changes and different things like that where it was really nice to find something that is a different brand that will slot right in. So, and keeps me printing quickly because I don't want to sit there and fight with a ton of stuff. I don't want a filament that's gonna just clog up my machine and be a pain in the butt. So, um, JL definitely wins. It's really a good filament. So I really encourage you guys to look at the filament and you know invest in this. They're new to the United States, they're moving into the market. So it's definitely something we wanna look at. So where to buy, like I said, Amazon link is down in the description below. Ease of use, I slotted it right in. And if you're interested in my print profiles, shoot me an email and I'm glad you send you my 4.91 print profile for an Ender 3 or CR10 or the Odin F5 that will set the temperatures and get you this stuff in there working really well. Um, here, before we go, one of the things I do want to do is I'm going to get the, um, I want to get the silk in here and show you guys too. So that will be added in here in a minute. Or actually, I'll probably just show that at the end. The silk, wow. Um, I've worked with other silks and I usually have to do a bunch of changing. This stuff slotted right into my PLA uh, profile and went right on with an Ender 3. So um, I'll have that, at, I'll tag a video of that on the end of the Dr. Doom mask that I'm working on. So you guys can see that. And if you want to see a video of me just doing, making the Dr. Doom mask, um, printing it and getting it out there and show you the model I use, comment down below if you guys want to see that. So cost, $18.99, right in line. Uh, the costs are completely competitive with other PLAs. So I do encourage you guys to give this one a try. Color, like I said, it's an off-white, but it's still white. So um, I'm a little spoiled for using the inland. I like the pearly white, but in all, all honesty, it doesn't matter. Because what are you going to do with this? You're going to paint it, probably. So you're not going to see that undercoating of what the actual PLA came out with. So the off-white, it is a very standard PLA white, which is good. So um, definitely kind of keep that in mind if you're printing, if you're wanting that pearly the white. Um, definitely look at your color sets um, and paint and detail. Well, we're going to get to that here in a minute because I'm going to go prime this thing uh, probably right now um, and come back to you guys on that part. So let's wait for that to be done. I'll be back in a second with the painted model. Okay, guys. So I went out and did the painting. So got two battle stars painted from the same can, same method, black primer over gray or black primer then gray primer. So, taking a look at these, can you tell which one's the J.O.? Is it the one in my right hand, A, or is it the one in my left hand, B? So, just kind of giving you a good look at the print. Here's A. Can you tell which one's which? To find out, join me next Tuesday as I do a YouTube short on this very thing. I'll give you the answer on Tuesday. If you want to, leave your answers down in the comments down below. But 
painting wise, I used Army Painter Primer, uh, black, gray. Um, I do black underneath, and then I come back with the whatever the hollow color is going to be to give a shadowing effect is why I do that. So one other thing I'm going to point out with JO is here's the actual filament on spool. That's what I have left of the white after doing testing and printing fun things. But one thing I am going to tell you is this spool is a bit wider than some of the other spools out there, the Eson or the or the other spools. So you guys have seen me use these spool carriages on my printers. I put the spool in there. Unfortunately, it doesn't fit very well on my carriage, which kind of did create some pull problems for me. But if you're doing the printer arm on the printer, it works just fine. So, but if you're doing the carriages, just kind of be careful. It doesn't fit very well. Um, the carriage is too short. So that is one problem that I ran into. The filament spools, their spool, I wish they weren't black. That's my only thing. Um, they don't let us recycle black plastic where I'm at. So that does kind of create a problem in recycling and stuff like that. But there are companies out there and I plan on doing a video where you can send your empty spools and stuff to be recycled. So the last thing I want to talk about is the silver silk. I was very impressed with the way this turned out. So this is a Dr. Doom mask. Um, this was actually for a coworker that I'm working, asked me to print this for him. I have done very little cleanup. I pulled the supports as you guys can see, that silver silk comes out slick on my standard PLA settings. Um, Inland PLA and different brands like that, I usually have to heat it up more um, to get it to work. So I was very impressed with the silver silk filament. Um, this is probably something I will definitely keep more in my inventory um, just because it printed really well. I usually just do everything in white, but a little bit of cleanup, go over the rough areas with a heat gun where I sand or wherever to pop that color back out. And this guy's ready to rock and roll for some paint on the metal, metallic parts um, to give it some accent and stuff like that. But all in all, there's not a lot of work to have to be done with this one. So I was very impressed with the quality of print. So uh, the silk filaments are really easy to use that I'm finding from J.O. And I actually want to get some more and try out a few other colors and different things like that to see if I have the same success. Um, this was completely done on an Ender 3. I use these on my CR10s V2s and V3s, um, just testing the filament across multiple different printers that I have in the shop. Granted, they're all Creality. Uh, I didn't get a chance to test it on the Odin 5, unfortunately, but um, I imagine I will use it on the Odin 5 at some point. So, all in all, they worked on whatever printer I had in the shop, and I was very impressed by that. So, because Duramec. It doesn't like my CR10 V2s very much. I pop it in that V3, works like a glove. Pop it in an Ender 3, it works great. But for some reason, my V2s don't like it. Eh, eh, it is what it is. So, guys, I do recommend this filament. If you found this video inform informative and you want me to do trials on other filaments, let me know down in the comments down below. Give this video a like and make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're new here so you get notifications and different times of when videos come out. So, catch you guys next Tuesday for the answer on the Battle Stars, and we'll see you in the next video.